Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps, and I am dusting off some terrain. That's right, I'm actually painting terrain for this Warhammer Wednesday. This has been staring at me from the shelf for way, way too long. So it's time to dust it off, slap some paint down, get it to a tabletop level at least. So we're starting off with black prime, as you can see on the model, and we're going to use Morphang Brown to begin with. So for those of you who are wondering what this is, this is the Eldric Ruins. I've got both parts, this is the only part that's undercoated and it's the only part I'm painting in today's video. So there'll probably be another one of these videos at some point in the near future. But this came out with, I believe it was part of Kill Team. When they were creating different boards, they were creating the Death World kind of tabletop for your Kill Team to fight over and for some reason they decided that was how they were going to add Eldari uh, terrain pieces. It was a weird choice in my opinion. The kit did not go down well. I'm not entirely sure if you can still even buy the kit. Uh, I had a quick Google, I didn't really find much on it, so I guess it's gone out of production. Uh, I did find a lot of negative comments about it being like bad aquarium <laughs> uh, terrain, but I really like it personally. So. As you can see, I completed everything that I feel should be brown on the model. That took a lot longer than I expected. This is wibbly wobbly terrain piece, if that's the best way to describe it. It's also very sharp. I'm then going to focus on the head of the plant, which I'm going to use corn red. And if hopefully this description is correct, but the Eldric Ruins are the two largest pieces in the Eldari range. Each one depicts a barbed venom gorse plant entwined around an ancient piece of Eldari wraithbone ruin. Like the other barbed venom gorse, the foliage parts of the tree are interchangeable. So on this one I used the head of the plant, and then on the other one, which we'll see at a later date, I used all the like leafy bits. So there you go, I got a lovely red on it. So my understanding is this thing could attack you. It gave cover in game, but it could also eat your models if you weren't careful. At least that's my understanding of it. I'm not entirely sure if that was what happened in game or if anyone played it that way. But yeah, this has sat with my Eldari collection for way too long and I'm slowly getting around to upgrading everything. I've got to rebase the entire army which might be a video on its own. It's not something I'm looking forward to. It feels like a real pain in the ass, to be honest with you, to have to rebase everything. I don't play the game, so it's not a huge priority, but I would love to dust them off, photograph, do some more blog posts over at the website. In case you're not seeing the website, it's www.adventureswithpeps.com. It's full of Judge Dredd. I want to get some 40k on there, because obviously that is part of my hobby as well. And whilst I was waffling, I did the pallid witch flesh, as you can see, just covered the entire runes in it. I spotted some foliage that I didn't paint brown, so that may come back to haunt me later. I then grabbed the telesar blue, and I'm going to use that on the eye section, just to make it pop a little bit. But yeah, I really want to start working on that blog a bit more consistently. Uh, the 40k pages are very much lacking in content. The Judge Dredd pages are going strong, they always will. Judge Dredd is my preferred topic. But I think it is time to get some 40k going again. You won't see me playing games of 40k, I don't have the time or the patience for the game at the moment. But I do have a lot of fun painting models to do with 40k, so there'll be a lot more going on very soon hopefully. I'm waffling a lot, I do apologise. So you just saw me grab the orange paint. I'm going to use it on the head of this plant just to add a little bit of interest to it. Initially I was going to do, I guess, wet blending. So you see here I like slapped the points on. I really didn't like it so I went with a heavy dry brush instead and I actually liked the look a lot more. With that done, I grabbed the Reichland Flesh Shade and I'm going to cover the terrain piece on it. So there was a bit of me that was going to use the Skeleton Horde and then I thought that looked too obvious, a bony colour, so I thought a flesh colour might be a bit more creepy and eldricky, if that's even a word. 
Now, obviously I'm only painting this to a tabletop standard, so I'm being a bit slapdash, as you can see here. I want it to look nice and three foot away, but I'm not going to go crazy. I may use this terrain in Slain later on. Surround it with some trees, it will bury it away. It will look like an ancient ruin peeking up in the background. But I gotta be honest with you, it's looking pretty good. It's got, what, four or five colours on it at this point. I then grab the earth shade and I'm going to slap this all over the wood to add some uh, areas of interest with the depth and colour of it all. Like I've said in many a video now, painting terrain is not a priority for me. Don't get me wrong, I love a table full of painted terrain and having just done a Judge Dread video, I really want to get more painted up. There's nothing worse than having some unpainted terrain that just takes you out of the game in that moment when you're watching your painted figures run around. Right, I think we are getting somewhere. Look at it, it's already looking good. Sorry about this weird angle, I didn't really fancy setting up <laughs> the full camera equipment. So I just went with this like side view. I kind of like it. Probably worked better for a smaller miniature than a big old terrain piece. But let me know in the comments if you like it and why you're down there. Hit that like, comment, subscribe, all the call to action crap that you have to do on these videos. While we're doing that, I grabbed the armor, Cryptek armor gloss, I believe it's called. And I'm putting it in the mouth section of the plant. Uh, in theory, if my theory works, this is going to go nice and shiny. And will look like the actual inside wetness of a mouth and make it all juicy. And then we're on to the last stage, which is the orc contrast. I'm just going to pick out anything that is technically not wood on the model. Let's go with that. So the twines that are going up the statue. There's these weird spikes on the logs. There's also um, mushrooms. At some point, when I'm more up for painting it again, I'll, uh, I'll paint the mushrooms probably red and make them look like death caps, you know, with the little white dots on them. But for now, I'm just going to paint them green and we'll finish up the model there. I don't want to waste too much of my life painting terrain. It really doesn't interest me. I get why people enjoy it. I really do. I could see if, if I really got into it, I could really enjoy painting pieces like this and spend hours doing it. But for me, it's more of a backdrop. It's not the focus. So... I'm quite happy just to do these basic steps just to make it look interesting enough in a photograph with figures running around it but I don't need to go above and beyond so while I'm doing that we'll take some glamour shots at the end and uh, I hope you enjoyed it I know it was a weird quick dirty terrain video I've got a few more to do so expect more in the future but that's it for now Hope you enjoyed, let me know in the comments below, and I will catch you in another video very soon. Cheers for watching.